Hi everyone, I hope everyone is keeping well and I am Shirley and this is my Floss Tube channel uh, Alchemy Needlework where we explore all aspects of needlework that I do which is cross stitch, embroidery, tapestry and anything else that comes along into the mix and today I'm going to be showing you how I do the whole bind stitch or the double running stitch as it's otherwise known. I am doing a piece of black work. This is part of the threadsteady.com uh, sale for 2022, the botanical garden. And I am going to show you how to, as I said, do the whole bind stitch. Now let me just get my thread. I'm trying a different setup today in showing you how I do my stuff, so bear with me. With this black work, there does me there is a, t a lot of turning around. For those that don't know, black work is a form of cross stitch embroidery, mainly consisting of straight stitch. It came across with supposedly with Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's wife, and it was known as Spanish black work. I have got some embroidery scissors somewhere around, but where they've gone, who knows in this this storage room of mine. Right, I'm just going to snip a bit of black thread out. And you don't have to do black work in black. And as I was saying, at one point it was part of the sumptive um, rules. Right, that's the wrong one. Let's do it again. Right, as I was saying, it black work came across with Catherine of Aragon, and at one point you had to be a knight or above um, to wear it to have it on your clothing. It was used instead of lace because lace was really prohibitively uh, expensive. I'll just have a sip. And it was used on collars and cuffs to reinforce them and to make them last a little bit longer as well as being decorative. So the whole boy's stitch was named after the artist Holbein because a lot of his um, subjects had this type of lace work on their dresses otherwise as it's known as a double running stitch. Now I'm doing the garden borders which is these squares here. Uh, let me just bring you in and Move the camera so you can see where I'm working, which is here. And I'm going to be starting off with a double thread where the infill is on a single thread. I'm using, as you can see, 310, but you can use any other colour you like. And I'm starting with a loop start on the top. Quite a lot of my um, black work is done in hand. I don't use a frame because I am frequently uh, turning around. And so, as you can see, I've done a loop start. I've made one stitch. I'm doing one two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches here. So I'll be missing every other one. This is how you do the running loop, the, the running stitch, double running stitch or the high bind. So I'll do that. So as you can see, I've done one, two, three, four. That's my eighth stitch. So I'll go into this top corner 
and let me just check with my pattern how many stitches I need on here. I'm using Markup XP as my uh, pattern holder. Nine stitches I'm going to need to do. So there's the first one. Excuse me, this, this is just a support tip while I'm filming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't worry about the odd mark here and there because I will be washing this when I finish. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let me just count one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'll continue along here. I went into back stitch there. So easily done. One. I'm just going to be travelling all the way along here until I reach the end. So you are basically just pushing your needle in and out in a running stitch motion. So let me finish this section and I'll show you how you finish off the double row. So Some of the holes are tight. So there we go. So as you can see, it just is just like a perfect running stitch. And when I'm finished with this thread, I will show you how you to finish off the stitch. Right. I'm going to just leave this thread hanging because I need to finish this row. But starting from here, I will show you how we return on the running stitch. So basically all we do to return to, to complete the double running stitch, as you might guess, is that we return the way we came using the same method. So let me just thread this needle. Right. I think I've lost the camera there at some point. So what I was saying, I don't know at this moment in time when I lost my filming, but to complete the whole binds or double running stitch, what we do, we go back on the stitches that we've had done and we just complete them by doing the running stitch 
like this. So up and down in the spaces that we've left we complete the stitch. Now this is great for borders as I'm doing here. Uh, you can use it for the inset but I've tended to do back stitch because it comes naturally to me but I am really liking the Holbein and some of this I don't know if you can see this bit where are we this one is done in Holbein but I will show you how to do it in a minute as an insert let me just finish this section and I'll be with you to show you how to do the insert And a good positive thing about this, if you have to frog, you know exactly how to frog it because you know that every other stitch. So if you know which direction you went, you have less problems frogging. Uh, not like with back stitch where you can just sort of dart around a bit. But I do try very hard not to fall into backstitch when I'm doing Holbein, but it's so easy, it's unbelievable. This is one of two projects I've got on the go at black on black work at the moment. Uh, I will show you the other one in due course. Uh, that is also a sow. But I'm way behind on that one. But as I get parts weekly, I can just sort of wait and just lump them all together and do a part, or do several. Or if I'm up to date and I just want to do this, I can just catch up and do one. So. So what I do, just follow the row. So you may need to follow design, but this is straight lines, so I don't need to follow the pattern so much. I'm coming to the end. So that is how you do the whole bind or the double running stitch. I will show you now, when I finish this, how I do it with where you're jumping around. Though I do prefer backstitch, but if you're doing something that is being seen by both ends, like a collar, then Holbein is the best way to go. So let me just fasten that off. I just weave mine. You know, someone who's got like 10 embroidery scissors and I can't find one. This is a really bad show, isn't it? I'm sure I brought one up with me. Right. I'll be back in a sec. Welcome back. And this is the second part of this video where I am showing you how to do the whole bind stitch 
um, in doing a design that is not linear. So I've just secured my thread and I'm just done with the first stitch. And then uh, that's my second stitch. So this is my third. Now this stitch is a cross stitch for some reason. So I'm doing that and then I am hitting this one here. So and I'm doing a diagonal. And then I'm doing uh, so missing one stitch, hitting the second, then the next one is going across, so I'm doing missing that one going down, missing the next stitch which is a diagonal stitch. So that is the last one of the sequence. So I'll just put that one there and then up behind that one. So I'm still doing a running stitch but I am placing it every other stitch. So that's that part of the design. Right, I'm jumping this one for the time being, going into this one, and then missing the next one, which is, and then straight. a diagonal stitch so then I'll go up to that corner and down miss that stitch go down just need to bring this a little bit lower down so you can see as I progress so up in this one down in this one, down, up in this one, down, and then I'm doing the cross, so putting that one there, then I'm going to miss at this stitch and go straight up to the next one, so that's one. down, this one, down, going up to the corner, down, doing a diagonal, and hitting that one. Easy. Split the thread.
because that's the last one of the sequence. I'm going backwards and starting again. So, I missed that one. I'm jumping this one again because it's a cross, so... I'm doing that one. That one. So you can see how it works out. Then we do
right, I hope you enjoyed this um, demonstration, stroke tutorial, and if you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could give us a thumbs up, and if you would like to see more stitches, give us a subscribe and hit the notification bell, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.